Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week. It's called Inside Out. It's the latest Disney and Pixar adventure about a young girl who has all the emotions that's controlled inside her head. It stars Amy Poehler from Saturday Night Live, Phyllis Smith, Bill Hader also from Saturday Night Live, Louis Black from The Daily Show, Mindy Kalin from The Office, Caitlin Diaz, Diane Lane, Tom McLaughlin, Richard Kine, Paula Pondstone, Bobby Mollahan, Paula Pell, Lori Allen, Frank Oz and David Goles, Flea, who was the band member from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Ronnie Del Kalman, Rashida Jones, and John Ratzenberger. It's co-written and directed by Pete Docter, the same man behind Monsters, Inc. and Up. The movie begins set somewhere in Minnesota. A young girl named Riley is born as an infant, and suddenly her primary emotion named Joy had appeared and started guiding her ever since. But as she grew older, Joy wants to join in by other emotions anger, disgust, fear, and sadness. And in each and every one of these emotions have a purpose in Riley's life. Joy actually controls uh, Riley's happiness. Fear actually keeps her safe from being harmed in any kind of way involving danger. Anger basically keeps her life fair by getting her completely angry at times and mad and upset. The guts actually prevents her from from getting involved in all these uh, disgusting foods such or any other stuff that she doesn't really like such as broccoli yeah, that could be both physically and socially in, in, in a different manner. But of course there's also Sadness who basically controls uh, Riley's sadness which makes you feel you know, very sad but unfortunately she, she wasn't so sure if she definitely has a, a purpose but of course she wants to be ignored by all the rest of of her emotions so anyway they wind up living inside their own headquarters where they can actually control each and every uh, one of her emotions by using a console that's uh, built inside it also includes all these color spheres, yeah, which is yellow, red, green, blue, and purple. And inside those spheres, you get to see a lot of her memories that she has. Yeah, all these, uh, every single memory of her childhood days. Yeah, everything from her when she was born to, to when she turns into a very young girl already hitting her preteen years you know, before she wants up growing up as the years went by but they're all being stored inside uh, a huge tube that that sucks into into the long-term memory storage which is basically a, a labyrinth um, type of maze that they build inside so you can actually go through and, and watch all of her memories that's being stored in, in place which we're going to get to also uh, most of her important memories are being stored inside the core memories room which is housed inside each of each of these headquarters and actually powered an island that reflects different aspects of of her personality which actually is definitely <laughs> you're going to love this a huge land so this is like, yeah, a huge island that's filled with uh, different type of places they have. It includes Family Island, Friendship Island, Hockey Island, Honesty Island, and Goofball Island. <laughs> so the whole thing is, is like one big uh, fantasy that's built inside her head. But as um, the years went by, Wiley had turned 11, and her family wants up moving from Minnesota to San Francisco after her father had received a job over there 
So suddenly, sadness winds up touching a happy memory that's been stored in, you know, on the palm of Joy's hand. When she was about to store into it to see what it looks like. As she actually touches it and it turns from a yellow spear into blue. Which, I know, that's where it starts to become almost happy and sad at the same time. Which, of course, Joy actually discovered that she'll be unable to restore. And that's where it gets, that's where all of, of her memories will turn into sadness. That's where Joy prevents sadness from touching every single one of these spears from turning blue. Because that's where... You know, the whole entire thing will become a huge disaster, which it did later on. So she wanted to keep her in, in a happy state. But that's when it gets even worse when, when on Riley's first day of school, all of a sudden sadness winds up touching the spear when, when they told her not to. I mean, they even, Joy actually tried to keep sadness into a circle so that way she wouldn't move a muscle. And so that way things could be safe and they can control each of her entire uh, mind, you know, by using the controls uh, console that they had. But unfortunately, Sandus did not listen. She actually screwed up um, and, and touches the, the spear anyway. And that's what causes Riley to, uh, to feel very sad and... And she started crying that about while she was talking about you know her hometown, you know, Minnesota, where she was having you know, she was having a good time over there before she moved to this place. Now she misses her friends and everybody else that she that she lived in. She missed her own house, her own uh, playground, you know, which includes uh, an ice rink that's that during the the winter time where she gets to play hockey, she gets to hang out with all of her hockey friends and everything. And it's a lot of good memories that she remembers the most. But that's all created into sadness. But while Joy tries to attempt to dispose the new core memory before it reaches into the central hub, yeah, which is the huge tube that I was talking about, they all all of a sudden, joy and sadness got sucked into it and wants up straight into the land called long-term memory. You basically see all of her long-term memories being stored in before they had her mind workers, perhaps, actually taking all these uh, those long-term memories and actually either dumping them into the memory dump, which went all the way down inside a, a huge hole underneath, and then... Or basically just put in some of the other memories that, that could be remembered by. So, uh, Joy actually um, took all four of her memories. Uh, and, and she kept holding it all this time until, you know, with uh, Sadness involved. You know, trying to avoid Sadness not to touch it. Because it gets even worse. Until meeting a one of uh, Riley's imaginary friends named Bing Bong. Was a pink elephantine uh, creature who wants, who desperately wanted to reconnect with Riley all this time, and not to mention actually telling them that they can actually get back to headquarters by riding on the train of thought. So this will be their ticket to actually going back to the headquarters before it's too late, which gets even worse because you know all this time you know Riley is already being in control by anger, disgust, and fear by taking over for for Joy's job. And that's where it gets even worse because she's already feeling left out after having not not the best day at school due to what just happened. And you know, she also got really upset uh, at her family while they were having you know, Chinese food. You know. And of course you even got to see yeah, you know, the mother and father's emotions as well. Yeah, very similar to her, by the way. <laughs> so that was funny. But yeah, at the same time, it, it was messed up. While they were with Bing Bon all this time, they tried to get to the train of thought by attempting to 
to take a shortcut into the abstract fog which causes them to break apart into a 2D abstract form so it looked really <laughs> yeah they were getting into the the two-dimensional um, animation so they changed them into shapes and once they escaped they actually missed the train and actually passed through other uh, lands out there such as imagination land and preschool land and all this other stuff that they went to until suddenly all of her other memories that she had in those lands were already being demolished and they're being thrown into the um, as we speak the memory dump so but it gets even worse because Riley's life is definitely falling apart once once anger, fear, and disgust had continued to control her. And that's where we get to find out that her best plans to from having to deal with all of, all of these emotions is having to go back to Minnesota but taking a bus. And Riley decided to borrow her mother's credit card just to just to get the tickets. And then so then she was planning on leaving in town by actually running away from her parents just to get to Minnesota. So that way she wouldn't feel all left out. And that's, yeah, because I know she wants to go um, be able to meet her friends again and be able to feel as happy as she should always been when she was there. But meanwhile, Joy, Sadness, and Bing Bong wants up going to... Uh, Dream Productions, which is sort of a a, a parody of uh, the Paramount Picture Studio lot, and they basically, basically just film one of uh, Riley's nightmares, which involves uh, school, and they're actually just playing as an act. But then Joy and and Sad is actually attempt to control it, so by disguising himself, so that way it's enough for them to actually keep her being awake. And, and well, Bing Bong was already being sent to to the room where he was being trapped inside a crazy clown. Yeah, and I know, and of course, you know, we already get the scene where where uh, Bing Bong started crying um, as all these candy starts to fall out you know, from her t from his tears. But then they they try to escape him so that way they can get the clown to actually scare her enough for her to get awake but then once again she started to plan on leaving and once she got into the bus just on her way to Minnesota you know joy and, and sadness you know had, had once up um, well at this rate joy actually wants up in the memory uh, dump you know with being born and they try to escape from that which then she, he actually saw one of her uh, spears actually showing some differences uh, in her life that makes everything from joy to, s to sadness. So once she tries to escape from the memory dump with Bing Bong disappearing, you know, Joy and Joy had to find sadness and, and together they finally uh, reach out by trying to find a way to get into the uh, into the tube so they go straight to the headquarters and when they finally made it they have restored everything back to its place so that way you know she'd be able to go back home to, to see her parents and, and actually talk about how she felt and how she really felt that that's is the main reason why she was sad in the first place is that she really wanted to go home and and go back to the way they were, so things would have been okay to, after she ran away. So yeah, so after all that, everything was finally back to the way they were by expanding a new uh, family island, and all the rest had had gone to place. So all these emotions are working together without any problems. So now, now she has a new personality. She finally gets to. Uh, play hockey with her you know, new friends and everything's back to normal so so she's really enjoying her new life in um, San Francisco with all these multiple emotions around so that's what the movie was all about and I gotta say it's 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 fun I mean coming from Pixar 
they, they really get better and better with each and every story that they come up with. And this is it. <laughs> I mean, in particular, I mean, I, I have loved a lot of Pixar films in the past with, with all the Toy Story films, you know, Bugs Life, Monsters, Inc., and, and WALL-E. But I also love other films, too, that I think they're, they're very special, like Up, The Incredibles, and... And even Brave and and Cars too. I mean, not not the not the sequel Cars, but the first one. Yeah, because the se the second one was pretty weak. I'll I'll give you that. That was the only weak sequel that we ever had. But everything else, um, you know, they're just getting better and better as stories been going around. And I was amazed how this movie turned out to be. But in that sort of way, it does kind of remind me a little bit of the 90s uh, Fox series called Herman's Head, which stars uh, William Rasdale from Fright Night, which is basically a story about about young about this one young man who wants up um, or working as a law firm, yeah, and he actually has emotions of his own in, inside his head. That's actually controlling all of this stuff, so it's really cool that they got the idea for a series. But, but in comparison, this was more of an adult-oriented show, while this one is a family film, and it works. And I, I like the fact that we got to see more of that. We get to see more of of their emotions, um, point of view. So we get to see them actually controlling each and every one of these emotions that they have to choose you know so that means you know they're in control to to make her feel you know happy sad anger disgust and fear and <laughs> yeah I mean it, it works I mean this was a good idea for a movie like this and I like it and I like the fact that that the entire headquarters is built in along with all the islands that they had you know, even before they started having destruction and all this, it's almost like, <laughs> like it's in real life. I mean, the fact that they they put in all this other stuff that they had in the mix, so that was cool. I mean, it had perfect animation that they chose. Uh, I love the characters that they had uh, for one of the emotions that they choose. I love joy, yeah, uh, as well as sadness. So I think. Together, they're actually a great team. I mean, you definitely feel sorry for sadness, though, because I mean, after all, she is the girl that's that's being left out of the group. I mean, she feels like she's she's more of an outsider compared to them. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad to see that you know they did they did actually have Joy uh, help her out, you know, but even though she did told her not to to do is because it gets because you knew something bad was going to happen after that I mean she's trying her best not to let this happen but e even even she felt uh, even she felt this way you know that she wanted she wanted to fix everything so it won't happen again so I'm, I'm glad they, they pitched in to help you know restored every every single of her memories even new memories that they put into it. So the only thing I, I would get rid of, however, was that one scene which just seemed like a parody of of Justin Bieber. Yeah, they show a, a young kid, and and yes, they even said he's <laughs> he's from Canada. So yes, there's a reference right there. Cut that scene out, and you'll have a much better movie. I mean, they could have had something better than that, but I I guess it's kind of cool that they actually had. <laughs> They had to have them all stack up by having to get to, into the central hub a tube that, that could suck into it all the way back. Yeah. With sadness uh, around. Yeah. So they can get back to the way they were before it's too late. Yeah. And I also love all the other emotions they had in the movie, you know, especially Bing Bong, you know, the pink elef elephantine, you know. It's kind of sad that you know he disappeared, but yeah. And but all the other characters, fear, anger, and disgust, you know, they were they were cool. I like that. 
And and I also like the fact that we even got to see the family's emotions as well, you know, and not just uh, Riley. So, yeah, they had they're basically similar to the ones that Riley has, but but they're quite different. <laughs> yeah, especially when one of them actually <laughs> as he shows uh, the father's emotions that he, you know, that he loves sports and and the mother's. Uh, <laughs> The mother's emotions basically focuses on another guy that that she loves and and all this other yeah and all this other stuff she, that she deals with. So that that was pretty cool. So yeah, I mean, it's a very fun movie. I I suggest you guys check this movie out, especially if you love all the Pixar movies that you just can't help but enjoy. This is definitely for you. I mean, that's really the beauty of Pixar, is that not only do they focus on CGI animation in a very unique way, but they also have a story that they really built onto. That's what makes it the best animation studio on the planet. And I hope they continue to make movies quite like this or any other that follows. Yeah, especially since we're now going to get another. Toy Story sequel after seeing all these short films and that we've been getting on TV and and of course we even had uh, <laughs> the and of course we're getting the upcoming uh, the good dinosaur that's coming out later in 2015 you know on Thanksgiving which unfortunately I had the feeling that this movie is going to have a big competition with the Peanuts movie which I'm really looking forward to see yeah I'm, I'm wearing my Peanuts shirt by the way which I'm really excited that that film's coming out, but either way, those two films so far are going to be my favorite top. That both of these films so far are going to be on my top favorites of 2015, yeah, and definitely this is it. So yes, definitely see Inside Out. You'll never get disappointed. So anyway, I give this film. Five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.